Howdy, Eggs. This is AP from the tailgate from the Aggie football. What's up, Corey? What's up, buddy? I don't know if you folks out there can tell. Me and Corey, we're in the same place today. Getting a little Aggie football talk face-to-face, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Before we get into a little Aggie football talk, though, we got some things we got to take care of. Today's show brought to you by Bright Beginnings Preschool and Early Childhood Development, dedicated to providing an exciting opportunity to learn, explore, and grow. Visit their website at mybrightbeginner.com. Uh, if you have any questions about the program, talk to Carrie. She's awesome. Yep, she is awesome there. Folks, don't forget, questions, comments, email us at axtailgate at gmail.com. You can also post on the YouTube channel, the Facebook, the Instagram, so on and so forth. We'll try to hit some of those up. On that note, let's take a look at some of the comments that we had this past week. First and foremost, uh, email emailer says that the mustache is looking good. Uh, that's important. The yeah. compliments on the stash, baby. Uh, we should take a poll. Uh, should we keep it? Shave it? Does it look horrible? Very hot? A little creepy? Please respond via email. I got creepy on there. <laughs> we got at least one vote for creepy. There you go. Uh, Another thing that I was told is apparently I used the term Gronk a lot last week. So my goal here today is to use it more. Well, so that was one. Talking about Jake Johnson, if you're talking about Jake Johnson, Gronk. that's Gronk right there. How, how about how about Theo Gronkish? Yeah, very Gronkish. Yep. Does that count as using the word Gronk? Yes, it does. It counts. You remember that song? Uh, it's like, uh, oh man, what was the heck? Roxanne, putting on the red light. Roxanne, Roxanne, and then they just keep saying Roxanne like a thousand times. I wouldn't do that for Gronk. Gronk, okay. Gronk, 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 <laughs> Gronk. Drink off. Uh, that could be a drinking game for you guys. Anyway, uh, a couple of other ones on YouTube. We had uh, Carrie, who believes. It's good to be king. Obviously, after our discussion last week on Haynes King and the fact that he's going to start, he's probably going to be the starter for the Saggy football team. Right. Still, still in competition, of course. Yeah. Um, but she believes it's good to be king, and I agree with her, by the way. Well, or, or him. I mean, whatever. Uh, I think we've got a the you troller on our YouTube channel. Good. Uh, New King God, and he is a. Uh, has an opinion about what's going to happen against in the game against Miami. He believes, and Corey, you tell me what you think. The Aggies are going to lose by 30, and their new quarterback is going to throw four touchdowns. The newly projected first round quarterback. I guess he didn't watch our practice that we did. That uh, defense is pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> he might have uh, four picks. I'm not sure about four touchdowns. I'll say this. But hey, if that guy wants to make a bet, I'll take 30 points in the Aggies all I, day long. Every day off. Yep. I will take that every day off. I'll say this. Look, it should be a game. It should be a game. Yeah. But it's not going to be a high-scoring game. <laughs> I don't think so. Not on their side. No. Uh, Alex Smith thinks that Max Johnson should be the starter. He says he's had he's got a higher floor, will throw less iron teams. Uh, INTs, uh, and he commented on the fact that he believes King is a slow decision maker and not very accurate. Now, Corey, I'm going to let you respond to that. I think that, I mean, yeah, he's accurate on some of that. I mean, I think that King's accuracy was an issue last year. I mean, the only thing we got to see was Kent State through four picks that game, I believe, three or four. Three. Three. Um, the next Two game weren't his fault, by the way. Colorado, I'm not sure. Did he throw a pick that game? No. But he got hurt in the first quarter? He got hurt in the second drive. Second drive. So, I mean, there's not a lot of to see. We saw him in practice. He looked like he was making decisions pretty quick. Um, his accuracy is still a question. He tries to fit the ball in some tight windows. He doesn't have a lot of touch on the ball, it seems to me. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of upside though. He's got he's speed. He throws. He's on the ball downfield more, um, and he knows Jimbo's offense. Yeah, I, I'd say this. I mean, with with Max, I think that the, that the comment is correct in saying that Max may have a higher downside, right? Like a higher floor because of the fact that he's less likely to throw a lot of the picks. A higher floor? A higher floor, right? So like, Haynes can have a lower floor because of the interceptions that he's throwing, right? Right. Now, Max isn't going to throw the picks, but he's going to hold the ball and cause more sacks. He's not going to throw the ball downfield. He's not going to throw the ball downfield. He's not going to create as many big plays. Right. I think Haynes King's got the better arm. I think Haynes King's a better athlete. I think Haynes King probably knows the playbook better. As far as his decision making, his decision making has been he, he's as quick a decision maker as Max Johnson. As a matter of fact, if you go talk to all the folks at LSU, the biggest problem they had with Max is the fact that he wouldn't make a decision. He wouldn't let the ball go. We had the same problem last year with Calzada. And we, we saw how that right. you know, and that a lot depended on the offensive line last year too, though. I mean, you have to make a quick decision when you're behind a bad offensive line. Ultimately, with this group, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, right. You do. And it's ultimately, with this group, ultimately with this group, Jimbo's going to choose the guy that knows the playbook better because that's what he likes to have, right? Yeah. And that's going to be Haynes King. Uh, on Instagram, uh, we got uh, Aggie sideline liked our take on King from last week. They, uh, they, they. They thought we put out some good information there. Aggie Zone believes Haynes has looked better, but Max has an aura of confidence about him. And you can tell he's more experienced, but Haynes has the better arm and leg. I would agree with all that. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know, but you, Haynes has a, a ton of confidence. He he walks out there and he can control. I mean, you saw him in practice, right? He Correct. controls the, the huddle. He knows where everybody's supposed to be. He's very confident in what he's doing. He's throwing the ball with confidence down the field. So I like all that. So I think thank you for everybody there that with some comments. Uh, if we didn't get to yours, we'll we'll definitely do so uh, going forward or try to hit hit up some different folks. Keep commenting and sending some questions. We'll put them on, we'll put them on the show. Uh, all right, our next segment here is going to be brought to you by Carney's Pub and Grill, where the food is tasty, the beer is cold, and the women are hot. Corey, we were at Carney's the other day. Yeah, we were. They've got that new outdoor patio, man. That is a pretty nice little setup they've got. Out he there. does. He's done a good job out there, man. It's really nice. We sat out there for, I don't know, four or five hours. Yeah. yeah Had yeah. some cocktails, watched a little baseball. A little soda water, right? Yep. A little yeah. soda water. Absolutely. So go check out Carney's, man. Good spot. Fun spot. Been around for a long time. Uh, I think we might be doing a live podcast there. Yeah. We're looking into some days to do a live podcast there. Yep. So we'll let some folks know. All right. So another quick... Quick hitter here, Corey. ESPN put out an article saying Texas A&M is at the top of the list of underachieving programs. Other programs that were included in the list, USC, UCLA, Texas. I, think, I guess programs you would think of that there. What did, uh, who was on the top of the list last year? Uh, a team also in the SEC, the Georgia Bulldogs. There you go. Oh, my goodness. What did they do they, last year? Nah. That's what I'm saying. It's not a bad thing to be at the top of that list. Apparently not. No. Um, it's actually a great thing to be at the top of the list because it does show something that we talked about last week, right? This program has everything it needs to succeed. Right. It's got the fan base. It's got the money. It's got the players. It's got the uh, recruiting area. It's got, you know, everything you can ask for, facilities. Um, and they're, they're building more, right? Exactly, yeah. They're not afraid to put money into the program. So, and so that's when it comes back to Jimbo, right? It's either do we have the right coach in place or not? So, I guess some people keep asking, it's like, oh, okay, well, do we have, you know, oh, when the one of these players going to, you know, take take over and start doing the, what they should, or they start talking about, do we have the quarterback, or they want to know, I don't know, you know, they or they they want to they talk bad about the, the the players themselves, right? Right. At this point, let me tell you, all these guys have been recruited by Jimbo. Yeah. There's no question. He's brought the entire team in, right? Exactly. And, and so if the players aren't good enough, that's his fault too. Exactly. But at the end of the day, those players are good enough. Oh, they There are. is plenty so, of talent yeah. out there on that field. They're deep. They're talented. They they're just need big. some time to mesh together. And I think we'll see that here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And hopefully we get the same results as Georgia from last year. 
Exactly. Because it is time for a breakthrough, right? It is. Uh, all right. So today we're going to get into the SEC over-unders on win totals for the year, Corey. This is one of your favorite topics, man. Love it. Getting into the betting. Exactly. I love the betting, too. Yeah, let's make some money. But here's the thing. Before we get into that, let me just say this. I'm, today I'm wearing my, my Astro shirt here. Yeah. Little Astro shirt. It's kind of – it's for a reason. Because here's of late – Because they lost Brantley. Is that why? Oh, uh, well, reminiscent. My boy. Brantley, Brantley is an important piece of the team. It'll hurt to lose him. But you know what? The Astros all of a sudden are ranked in the American League standings. American League standings. American League standings for the entire American League. Does that mean they're going to the World Series? I'm just asking do you know where they're at and where their standings are at. Yeah, we all know. Where are they ranked? They just said they're in first place in that. I didn't say that. They just, they're in first place? Yeah. No way. They, they are. I thought the Yankees were like, I thought no, the, Yankees the Yankees were like 10 games ahead of everybody. Well, they lost like 10 in a row. <laughs> they just lost two or three to Boston, and it's not good. For you guys that don't know, Corey may be a Yankee fan. So. Right. I like to, you know, just have this conversation with him from time to time. We, at this point, we truly believe that the Yankees are basically just not even gonna yeah, compete in the America. playoffs, right? I mean, they're, I mean, Astros, they should just let them go ahead and start the World Series already. They keep losing players like Brantley. It's not gonna, not gonna be a World Series. They the just, they also just got Lance McCullers back, by the way. Lance he McCullers looked good. Looked, good. looked really first good. start of the year. Really. Hey, man, go no, Astros. Sure. Let's talk a little Aggie football. Yeah. All right, so over under win totals for the SEC. We'll get into actually a few programs that, you know, just nationally here and there. We're not going to get to the Aggies today. The Aggies are for their next show. We're going to do a full show on the Aggie win total next on the next episode. So today we'll try to run through the majority of this SEC thing. Some of these teams we're not going to spend a ton of time on just because, let's all be honest, do we really care what Bambi's going to do? No. I do because I'm going to bet it. Um, taking over two and a half? <laughs> I'm taking over two and a half. Georgia, 11 is the over-under. Look, they don't return a ton of starters. Everybody knows the story. All the guys that went to the NFL, especially off of that defense, the defensive front, the linebackers, the secondary, I mean, all that stuff, right? But they've got tons and tons of talent. They've been a top five recruiting team every year for the last however long he's been there. Right. Um their quarterback is back. Their quarterback, Stetson Bennett, who a lot of people don't give that much credit to, right? Mm -hmm. They think he's just sort of a placeholder, a guy that, you know, is a caretaker. He's good enough to let JT Daniels go home. That's right. And he's also good enough to win a national championship. Exactly. By the way. And he had some big plays in that national championship game. He is what we need at a &M. Somebody that can turn the ball over a lot, moves the chains, scores, a couple big plays here in their game. That's what we need. Even well, they had a strong defense. He didn't turn the ball over. Look what happens. That's it, man. That's it. And I think he actually adds to that offense. I think he's actually a better player than people give him credit for. And he, he, you know, he's not going to go get drafted and go be an NFL quarterback guy or any of that. But as a college football player, the guy makes plays. He wins another national championship. He might be on a pro team. Look, and obviously, defensively, they still got a ton of talent, but they've got to replace a ton of guys. And the reason I say that, especially right now, is I think by the end of the season, there's a good chance this is a pretty darn good Georgia defense. Yeah. And, look, Kirby Smart's as good of a freaking defensive coach as there is in the country, hands down. He's right? done a great job. Hands down. And, you know, with that group, they're going to bring in some of that talent. There's going to be some new talent. But there is going to be some growing pains. There has to be, right? There has to be a little bit of time for all those guys to start playing together, get all those things together, and, and produce like last year. I think they take a step back, not a huge step back, but a step back defensively. No, I agree with you, but um, I still see 11 wins over under where you at on that. You're probably under then. I think – and they got the, I think I'm under. under. And the reason I think I'm under is because they probably end up at 11 wins. But I don't see them going undefeated. Look, they start the season off against Oregon. And I know everybody's saying, Oregon, Pac-12, who cares? Who did Oregon, Oregon beat last year? Oregon last year beat Ohio State right off the bat, right? In, in Ohio State, wasn't it? Yeah, at their place. And here's the other thing. 
By the way, the new coach at Oregon, oh, he was just their defensive coordinator over at Georgia, right? Yeah. Lanning's taking over the job at Oregon. You know, they and and the one thing you know about him is he knows all the ins and outs of what Georgia likes to do. Right. You know what I mean? He also saw that offense on a daily basis on defense all last year. He knows the players and the weaknesses and the strengths for the defenders. I mean, I think that buys him a little bit of an advantage. Is that to say that Oregon's going to go beat Georgia? No. And they're playing in Atlanta. I mean, it's almost a home game for Georgia. Oh, it is. But I think it gives them a shot. Yeah. I mean, I think they have a shot. I mean, I think Tennessee and Kentucky might have a shot also. I mean, they have their quarterbacks returning. Um, Those two, I think those three teams right there are the top of the East. Yeah, they've got Florida's a look. They've got a stretch, up. a stretch run where they go: Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Kentucky. That's four straight games, and I'm not going to say they're going to lose. You know, two or right. three of those games, but are they going to lose one? I think they will. I think they will lose a game in that stretch, and that means to me, all of a sudden, the over can't happen. Well, if they lose one of those games in that stretch, they might not win the East. It, it could be. I mean, if they lose to Tennessee or Kentucky, that's right. Look in Kentucky, that end that's that's towards the end of the year. I mean, that's a huge that's gonna be a huge matchup if Kentucky is held up there into the bargain. Right. Um I mean, do I think it's gonna happen? No. I think Georgia will win all those games, to be honest with you. But so you go that, no, I'm taking the lead. I think they'll lose one game. I'm just not sure which one it'll be. Right. One of those games is just I mean, Alabama lost A and M last year. A and M lost four right. of the games. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it just happens. It's hard to win. Go undefeated. And it is. And it's hard to go through a stretch like that, too, yeah. right? So I, I'm going to go under, not because I actually think they're going to go under. I think they'll probably go 11, 11 wins. Right. But I don't think they're going to go 12. That's that's my that's my thought process on that. Uh, Kentucky. <clears throat> so Kentucky's at eight and a half. Man, they've got – look, everybody is putting a ton, a ton on the fact that Will Levis is back for that group, right? Mm-hmm. And – he did lose his best receiver in Wando Robinson, but they got other guys stepping in. Uh, defensively, they've been always been good under Stoops. He's always overproduced with those guys on defense. I, I hear you in that. I just don't think teams get up for him like they're going to start getting up for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that the teams in the East have been down. The defense has been good, but Tennessee's been down. They're just now getting back up. Uh, South Carolina. Awful. Vanderbilt, awful. Yeah. Florida's been up and down. But I mean, no, and Georgia's never so that's, been known that's for their offense, start. right? That's Georgia's a good start. Known for their offense, no. really. So, I mean, but, you're talking about Kentucky's defense. They're not, they're not playing the, the West where you got Alabama, you got Mississippi, you got the schools that are going to throw the ball around. Yeah, but up until points. this past year, Florida's been a high flying offense for a couple of years. Well, yeah, they were for a couple of years. You know, and, you know, it's not like Tennessee hasn't now, it, last year was really. Well, last year they were, well. you know, but they're they're always pretty darn good defensively. Yeah, they, they, you know, the year they came and played us. But I mean, you get to play Vanderbilt every year in South Carolina. Sure. Your stats are going to look a lot better. Sure, but... sure, sure. Vanderbilt has been horrible, right? Yeah, Vanderbilt's been horrible. South Carolina has not been good up until last year. They started. They started. Were they good to, last year? They started to turn it around. Yeah, right. I'm just saying they started to turn it around. I got you. But Missouri really hasn't been. Great. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you got three teams right there. You put those three teams in the West. They're the last three teams in the West. Sure, sure. By a long shot. But Georgia's been really good through their run there, right? Right. And so that's been competitive. Obviously, you, look, you put Georgia East, in the West. How many games are they losing this year? They got to play Alabama, A and M. Georgia is in the same boat as Alabama. Right now, you think so? I do. They went one and one against Alabama last year. If you ask me, they're I'm just saying those two teams. Would they those, have a what would their same. runner be right now? Would it be eleven if they were in the West? In yeah, playing? I think it would. You think so? I think it'd be ten, ten and a half. And we'll get to Alabama here in a second, but I, I do think so. I okay. think those guys because the talent level is there. Yeah, you're wrong, but still. Yeah, maybe I am. With regards to Kentucky, look, they've got they go to uh, they go to Florida in week two. I think that's going to be the. The measuring stick right there. If they win that game, they should. A Florida team with a new coach and new program and all those things, they should win, yeah. right? If they win that game, then I think they've got a good chance to go over. If they lose that game, then they're not going to make it. 
I mean, listen, you're bringing a coach from where you, Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Lafayette, where Napier come from? Louisiana Tech. Yeah. It's one or the other, but it's the Raging Cajuns. Is that yeah. Lafayette? Lafayette. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Either way, it's a big talent discrepancy. I mean, you can put a scheme in into the small schools like Western Kentucky and throw the ball over the yeah. field and and win. You come into where everybody's playing on more of a level field, it's it's tough. And he's going to see a lot more speed. I mean, he's probably seeing it in practice right now, size, speed. Well, we'll see. We'll and see. Coaching has to have time to adjust to that. And but coaching is discipline too, right? It's, it's it getting is. those guys to do the right and thing. And he hasn't had time to, in and to out. be disciplined. Every weekend we got. Yeah. I think they're over. If I had to bet it today, I think they're over. They have the potential to lose, I don't know, maybe, maybe four games. But in reality, they're more likely to me to win at least a couple of those. So I, I think Ole they, Miss, Mississippi State, Tennessee, those are probably three losses. At, Possibly. They still got Georgia. Look, I don't know. I think they'll beat Ole Miss, first of all. I think they beat Ole Miss. I think they may be Mississippi State. They could be Tennessee. They, I, they probably split those two is, okay. what, is what I would what, what I would guess. So and they lose to Georgia. Is, Georgia's a sure loss, you think, is right at it? I mean, that's, that's a – it's not a coin flip for me, but it's – Look, if they're undefeated going to Georgia, man, that's the game I want to see. Oh, they're going to lose that game if they're undefeated going to Georgia. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's at home, too, by the way. Yeah. So they play in Kentucky. Is it, is it at Rep Arena or something? Are they playing basketball? Yeah. <laughs> Look, you're right. Look, Georgia's a much more talented squad, yeah. right? Their roster's top to bottom. They, and they've got a good coach. You know, so it's not like Georgia's going to show up just poorly coached or whatever. Right. End of the day, they're going to probably lose that game. I agree with you. I do think that they get to nine wins. My question with t- Kentucky is, can they get to 10 or 11? I think they get to nine. I'd go over, but I, the eight and a half is a tough bet, I think. I'm, uh, the eight and a half, I think they're going to be eight and four. I'll, I'll go with eight. I think that the uh, so you're going schools, yeah, I'll go under on that one. See, you, you're giving Ole Miss and Mississippi State a lot of credit is what you're doing. I am. Right. See if you do it here. So Tennessee is at seven and a half when it's over on you, right? I like that Tennessee Ooh. team a lot. Yeah. Hendon Hooker has been phenomenal at quarterback since he's mm-hmm. gotten there, started last year, all those things. A lot of questions surrounding the defense. They haven't been great. And he's never really had a great defense. Obviously, with that offense, it's hard sometimes on the defense, right? They're definitely very tired and at the end of games. They don't have the depth to sort of make up for that defensively. Look, they go to Pitt in week three. A Pitt team that's replacing a quarterback, right? right. It should be Pitt. And the top wide receiver just and, transferred to USC. And the top wide receiver just transferred to USC. So then you got games at Florida, at LSU, and then by at home back to back. So Florida is one, is, is I think week four maybe. And then they get LSU and Bama back to back later on in the season. That could be they'll probably lose two of those three at least. I mean, I'll yeah, say Alabama for yeah. sure. So LSU, I'm not sure what to expect out of those guys, but I mean, new coach, same thing. But he's, I think, will be a better than. They also get Kentucky at home, and then they go to Georgia to end the season. So I think the Kentucky game at home might be a win for them. Lost to Georgia. You know, the more I think about it, this one, the schedule is extremely tough, right? Right. I mean, they're getting Bama. Every, they get Bama every year, unfortunately, for Tennessee, right? And, right. And this, and obviously they've got Georgia in the schedule. Mm-hmm. But seven and a half? Dude, seven and a half? So we're, I don't they'd, know. Have to, they'd have to lose five games. Has he, replenished, lose five has games. he replenished all that talent there yet either? Has he replenished all the talent? Because they lost a lot of players last year to the transfer portal. I yeah. know he has a lot of players yeah. coming back. They took a lot of people by surprise last year. That, Are they going to be I ready? So. I think they're going to be ready this year for Tennessee. I think they did. Look, they started off the year and Hendon Hooker wasn't their quarterback. It was the Michigan transfer, right? And that guy was horrible. Horrible. Hendon Hooker got, in, got, got the reins, and that thing changed right. immediately. If he can stay healthy... I'd go over, no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, I'm glad we don't play. So you're taking Kentucky over, Tennessee over? 
So far, I'm taking everybody over except for Georgia, apparently. And you said they're going to win 11 games. <laughs> so let's so go to some unders. Play, uh, Tennessee, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the over in Tennessee. It's under Kentucky, over on Tennessee. And look, and, and honestly, like you said, there's a chance that that Tennessee Kentucky game makes a difference for both of those teams on the whole. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is a chance, and uh, I think Tennessee's got a little bit more leeway because of the seven and a half versus eight and a half. Um, but that offense is going to be nasty to deal with, nasty, nasty to deal with. If they can get any stops, they're going to go over, and it's not even going to be that hard. Yeah, not even that hard. Uh. Moving on to Florida, this is a seven and a half, and this is one that I'm going to say under. under, Yeah. Right? Look, for all the talent over there at Florida, they've had it's depleted over the last couple of years since Mullen's been there. New coach. Now they've got a new coach. They brought in some players, but they've got to learn a whole new system. They've got to learn new practices. They have to learn everything about it. They have to learn. They're building this quarterback up to be a top five pick in the draft next year. I just. Richardson, Richardson, man. I mean, everybody's talking about him being the next coming, right? But at the end of the day, he couldn't even beat out Emory Jones last year. Yeah, he wouldn't start at AM this year. So I'm not sure. Look, he's got he's he's big, yeah, that's big arm, size, and those they, they, those NFL folks and evaluators, oh, yeah, they, they love size, right? Yeah, they love it. Uh but at the end of the day, he's got to produce. Exactly. He's got to produce. And in college, that means you gotta make plays. On the outside to your wide receivers these days. Right? Always wide receivers. You got to be receiving. Yeah, I don't think you can name one. Exactly. And so that's kind of my point. They they still need a lot of help. Yeah. And their schedule isn't easy, right? I mean, you yeah. they got Utah in there. Utah beat them. And Utah's going to beat them early in the season. Yeah. Kentucky, Tennessee will beat them. LSU will probably be a good game. They'll lose to Georgia, lose to A and M. Now. Oh, yeah, I think I think the seven and a half, they've given them way too much credit over there. Yeah, he's going under. Look, Billy Napier may be a good coach, but he ain't he ain't he ain't ready for that. No, not the first season. I'm going under. Under on, on the seven and a half. Under. Missouri, five and a half. Look, they didn't cook the quarterback the other day. He's not, you know, there's no flash there. I like the other kid, Tyler Macon. I I really like his athletic ability and things you can do with him. But that's not what they're doing over there. But at the end of the day, the defense was horrible last year under Wilkes. Now, they replaced – Wilkes left. He went back to the NFL. He was a, a, a terrible coordinator. But they they promoted a guy from within, Baker. I'm not sure that the defense gets any better. It was horrible last year. I mean, they go to Auburn. They play Georgia, to Florida, to South Carolina, Kentucky at home, to Tennessee, finished with Arkansas. I don't – I don't see five and a half wins here. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Uh, I'm not sure who their cupcakes are. But, I mean, you figure, what, two wins out of that non-conference maybe? Maybe three? Yeah. And then I you mean, got to win three games in conference? I, I don't see them winning three games. They'll probably lose to South Carolina. This they year. Might, yeah, they might be vain. Yeah. That might be it. Yeah. I'm going so, under with Missouri. Yeah, I'm under. Uh, speaking of Bandy, two and a half, the over-under. Look, they go to Hawaii to open the season. Do they win that game? They should. Should they? Across? I mean, I'm looking at their schedule. I think Fandy's going to win more than two and a half games. Because you got – I mean, they play Elon. Dude, they have to beat Hawaii to win more than two and a half games, I think. I, I think they'll beat Northern Illinois. I Northern think, Illinois is no slouch. And that, who knows? They might beat a Missouri or South Carolina team. They might. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. What I'm going to tell you is this. If they don't win those first three, they're not going over. Well, if they win the first three, it's over. That's what I'm saying. I'm taking. I'll, I'll take the over on that. Are you? Yeah. Ooh. I like to bet. I said. I know you do. I. Did you, did you just say over. Oh. Two and a half. Man, I don't know. They play Elon. That's they're, one win. Hawaii should be two. They're not going to win an SEC game, right? And they play Northern Illinois. I think that's three. Northern Illinois could beat them. I'm going to cash my ticket after three games. At Hawaii, they could lose in the open. Hey, I could be losing my money after the first game. All right, all right. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with over two, though. I, I think they win those first three games, and, and they're over. But it ain't going to be my much. It'll be a three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it won't be. They're not going to be doing what their coach said. They'll be challenging for SEC no, titles anytime no, soon. No, no, no. 
All right, South Carolina. Look, this is a team. I really like the coaching staff, man. I like what Beamer's doing. Uh, obviously, look, they're returning a bunch of offensive players, including their entire offensive line. They got, you know, seven returning on on defense, including four defensive backs. So they've got some pieces. They don't, they don't have the, the manpower up front on defense, especially. And even that offensive line that's returning wasn't great last year. So there's the question to me. Can they take a step forward with the new quarterback, Spencer Rattler, who everybody's really excited about, that people know is a five, former five-star kid, has got all the tools of the trade, right? He can throw the football. He can run. He can do everything he, everything you can ask a guy to do. But, one, the schedule's not the, easy. The schedule sucks. Yeah, that, I was just looking right? at that, and I was like, I mean, I, are they beating – are they going to beat – Arkansas? No. Georgia? No. Kentucky? No. AM? No. Florida? Maybe. Tennessee? Clemson? Not likely. Clemson? No. That's seven games right there. Yeah. I got to go under. I mean, I just have to go under on that. I don't see them winning either. They might be close games. You might give them a pat on the back for being close, but. Yeah. Uh,. I mean, there's they could go to six. They could get to six. They I could win to one six. of those games to get to six. They could get to six. But it's, I'm that's, gonna go under because they're not gonna be I'll tell you right now, they're not gonna be favored in any one of those seven. No. That's that's the key. I mean, they're gonna be favored. No. And sometimes I mean, yeah, the favorite team can always win. Right. But I mean I'm seeing double digits against most of these teams. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, they're they're gonna they're not gonna be favored in the seventies. Florida they, is a game. Could they get to six? They could get to six, but that's about as high as they're gonna get. And that tells me you're much more likely to go under. I don't know. I'm Florida, Tennessee will be the two teams right. I think that they could possibly surprise. But yeah. I think that defense has a long ways to go. Yeah, and that's the thing. They won't be able to stop Tennessee, right? I mean, they're mm-hmm. not gonna be able to uh, you know, hold those guys down. So that would put so much pressure on that offense rather than that group. I do expect those guys to try to be more methodical offensively, by the way, hold the ball a little bit, you know, all those kinds of things. The way I don't that, think they will. Not with Spencer Rattler back there. I think the way gonna, that he did. Yeah. I think he's going to zing it out. We'll see. I don't think that's their best their best bet. I'll say that. I like that. But too. I'm going to go under. I do like that. I do too. Yeah, I'm going under on that one. So where are we at? Okay, on the I, east, we so got the east. Georgia under. You got Kentucky. You said what, Kentucky? Over. I took the under. Tennessee, I took over. the over. Over. Uh, and see, I made up for all those overs, early overs, because then I went Florida under, yep. Missouri under, Vandy. Did I say over? Oh, I said over. I did too. In South Carolina, I said under. So there you go. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Bama. 11 and a half. Here's my lock for you. I'm going under. And I'm going under just because of the fact that this team is absolutely replacing way too much talent on the skill position side of things. Um, Bryce Young is a great quarterback. He won the Heisman last year. He's not going to be as productive this year as he was last year. Too much talent on the outside. Their wide receivers, transfers coming out. Yeah. Uh, the two guys to the NFL, you know, actually three guys out to the NFL, Bolden as well, right? Mm-hmm. He's gone. So, I mean, I just don't – and everybody wants to talk up the transfers coming in for them. One of them is a, a Georgia transfer that, you know, the guy didn't hardly produce yeah. last year, yeah. Georgia. Yeah. The other one's a Georgia Tech – Running back, who your boys at Texas have leading the nation in rushing. That's what they were saying today. And to me, they're all idiots because everybody's giving Gibbs a whole lot of credit here. He he was at Georgia Tech and didn't have a thousand yards last year, by the way. Oh, I didn't know. I knew he was at Georgia Tech and I knew he didn't have a thousand yards. I, I want to see the kid play. I mean, I'm hearing good stuff. I'm hearing Demarco Murray type. And the offensive line, by the way, not that great. No, I think they're going to take a step back. So hey, listen, George Alabama lost to AM last year, and we had a, our second string quarterback in, a beat up offensive line. I mean, we started a guy, what trainer started at guard? The guard, the left guard. I mean, we had. Move, move Kenyon out to tackle that morning. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, Alabama's going to be good. Don't get me wrong, they're going to be good. But it's going to be hard to go undefeated. 
And that's what they're asking for, yeah. 11 and a half. Look, and, and defensively, they got some question marks. Look, Will Anderson is a monster. Will Anderson is a monster. That yeah. dude's going to have a Heisman-type year this year. I fully believe it. The guy is motivated, and he's ready to roll. We're talking number one pick type year. It's gonna be a lot of double teams in that kid. Lots of them. Because on the other side, yeah, they got a, they got some talent in different places, but they don't have proven. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the defensive line, by the way, not all that, not all that impressive. No, I mean, not not with mean, their production. They have athletes. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but yeah. Uh, in the secondary, they're replacing some pieces. Yeah, they get the LSU kid good. Ricks, and he's look that guy's a better transfer in than Gibbs at running back, if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, but they still, you know, they, they didn't, they, they weren't great in the secondary last year. You know, it makes you sort of look and see, Hey, what's going on here with those guys, but they got some players. Well, most teams philosophy when they play Alabama is you have to keep up with them. And we did it. Yeah. and m that's what we did. I mean, that was our, one of our highest scoring games of the season last year. We threw the ball, but we have to, cause you yeah. know, Alabama's going to score. So you have to go in with the mindset. We got to keep up. If you slow the game down, they're still going to score. Yeah, I don't think they're going to score at the rates they have been the last couple of years. Right. I just don't. I think that without the wide receiver depth that they've had over the last couple of years, I mean, it's we're talking impressive. a run it's of first-round dra- draft picks over yeah. the last six or three years, right? Right. Just incredible. Maybe four years. Yeah. It's been unreal. Mm-hmm. And at some point, that has to take a step back. Mm-hmm. And I do think that that's about to happen. Um, they'll lose a game. So 11 and a half, I think it's an easy under. Gotcha. I'm with you. I'll and they, under. Look, Utah State and Texas to start the season off from out of conference. And none of the, neither one of those two teams is the powerhouse. And they'll beat the crap out of Texas. Don't <laughs> neither one of those teams are like that. Yeah. Yeah, there is a, yeah. <laughs> but it's better than playing who – who do we start the year off with? App State. Yeah. It's better than playing App State. And Miami. No, no, maybe not. Uh, so under, they're going to lose a game in the SEC at some point. Yeah. In their, in their run and the stretch that they have Arkansas and m at Tennessee, Mississippi state by LSU at Ole Miss, there's a loss. Yeah. And be careful what you say about that state. They surprised Michigan years ago when Michigan was ranked yeah. in the top 10, top five. Hey, look, App state's a, a team that's got an eight and a half win total for this year. Exactly. They're not they're a bad always- team. One of the tops in their conference. Uh, the Arkansas A&M stretch right there, by the way, if you ask me, Arkansas A&M, Tennessee, mm-hmm. that's where the loss comes in. They got A&M at home. I don't, where's Arkansas? At? They have to go to Arkansas right before they play A&M at home when they're pissed off at A&M. Arkansas is going to beat them. Okay. I'm calling my shot right, right there, baby. I think you're wrong. Take it. Okay. Speaking of Arkansas, seven and a half win total. Here's another easy one. Over. Done. I don't even have to talk about it. I'm going to let you talk. I'm just trying to see who they play. That, Yeah, I can see that. I can see that easily. Especially 10 returners on offense. Let me let me say, yeah, let right? me say. They only yeah. lost Burks? No, 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 no. 10 returners overall. 10 returners overall. Mm, okay. Let me say this. Jefferson has to stay healthy. Yeah. I don't but know if that was all right. No. Hornsby? Was he the backup? Yeah. Okay. I thought that one kid, who they moved to running back or wide receiver? Horns. Okay. He's athletic. Look, he's athletic, but he's no he's no Jefferson. Jefferson now is the engine he's a that makes pro. that thing run. I think right? Jefferson's a future pro. Uh, they returned four offensive linemen, which is also what they base their, their team on, right? right? Offensive line, power running. The tailbacks are good. They've got multiple tailbacks there too that are going to split carries, and they're both they're all good. They have a good system. It'll be a close game no matter who they when they play Alabama. It'll be close. Yeah. Defensively, they got. I think Malik Corsby might make a difference for them at a wide receiver spot on the outside. Right. Give them a little speed on the outside, somebody to go deep with. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so they do have to play uh, replace Burks, obviously, but I, I I do think look they start with Cincy and South Carolina. I think that I think they Cincy's going to be Cincinnati. down. I think they they're beat Cincinnati be easy. Uh, South Carolina, South Carolina, A&M, A&M, Bama. There's their stretch. The stretch is A&M, Bama, Mississippi State, right? And, and you look at that, man. I don't know, man. I, I just, I just think that, I just think that their style of play, their style of play, physical the way it is, it, it travels, man. It goes. And every week you got a chance to go win, and they're gonna keep every game close. 
I think they're an easy over on the seven and a half, and I think that there's a chance that they go win the SEC West. Ooh, I just I said, didn't see that coming. I said that. Okay, I'll take the over on it. I'm not going to say. All right, I like that. Yeah. Well, I don't have to make that. I think the Aggies will be in this year. This. So I think that's a good game. Mississippi State at six and a half. Uh, they got a lot of folks returning, eight uh-huh. on each side of the ball, uh-huh. starting with their quarterback and Will Rogers. Will Rogers, by the way, had a pretty darn good season last year. But quarterbacks that have been in his system for three years, they just keep getting better. Yeah. And I think he is set for a monster year, not to mention four offensive linemen returning. Uh, basically, their entire front seven on defense is back. Uh, they've got to, you know, the secondary is the group that they've got to replace. But honestly, I mean, this team is set up for success this year. They're set up now, except for the fact that their schedule is a little bit of a beast. Well, I mean, you're playing the West. I mean, that's, but what is it, six and a half? They're playing the West. And out of the East, they get Georgia and who else? And Kentucky. Ouch. It's tough. Yeah. And they should beat Memphis. They should beat Arizona. But then they got... I think they'll beat LSU. I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of coin flips there. Ole Miss is a coin flip. There is a lot of coin flips. I think they LSU, beat Ole Miss. Um, yeah, the schedule's Ole Miss. tough, man. But six and a half? Assuming... Let's assume they get... Four games in the non-conference, right? See, I think it's a team like Mike Leach that could beat Alabama. I think he's the type of coach that can beat Alabama. Just the way his style of play is so it's not different. Not a question. It's not another question. He, the problem, he'll do the problem stuff is that, that makes you scratch your head and go, "What the hell did he just do?" The problem is that when their defense lines up in a three-man line against Alabama, unlike Jimbo, they're not going to throw. Alabama's not going to throw the ball everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Jimbo's going to pound that three-man line until you do something about it. Jimbo or uh, Saban? Saban. Yeah, Saban will. And no, so, Jimbo's on a... Right. So, the, my, I, look, man, this I think six and a half is, man, it's right on the number. But I think they get four wins in the non-conference, okay? I do think they beat Ole Miss, and I do think they beat Auburn. That gets you to, what, six right there? Yeah, I'm going to go over. Oh. Uh, where do they get their seventh window? Like I just said, they might beat Alabama. I mean, they they could be they could be the team that beats Georgia. Could be. Oh, LSU. I just I said it earlier. LSU. There you go. I'll go over. Yeah, I'm going over. Sorry. Not by much, but they'll go. Yeah. Ole Miss is where I flipped the script. Look, they don't have a ton of guys returning, but uh, they got four four returners on offense. They lose the most important guy in that program, though. 100% the most important guy in that program. That quarterback carried that team last year. He was everything for those guys. They have to replace him. Is it going to be Dart? Is it going to be the other guy? You know, they got a bunch of transfers coming in, but they have to put all those things together, all those pieces together. Uh, I am not high on Ole Miss as everybody else. I am not high on Kiffin coming in and, you know, cleaning, cleaning house and coming back again. His own brother decided not to freaking work for him because that's how much it sucks yeah. to work for Lane Kiffin. Um, I'm with you. I think the under. I'm taking the under. Because there it's, what, seven and a half? Seven and a half. And, old, and Mississippi State was six and a half? Six and a half. Yeah, I like Mississippi State better. Mississippi State's going to beat them to get the over. These guys are going to take the under. Right. There we go. Uh, I think they, so basically, they got five easy wins. I just can't find three more. Yeah. Uh, LSU at six and a half. This is an interesting one. Are they going to beat uh, first thing? It FSU, they got to figure out who the quarterback is, right? They haven't said who it is yet. No, and I was speaking to one of my sources over at LSU, and they think it's Nussmeyer. Who's that? He's the freshman from last year. But didn't they get a transfer from Arizona State or something in there? Yeah, Daniels, right? I thought he was going to be the starter. Well, then they had the starter coming back from last year, Brennan, right? And then there's Brennan. So and they've got Aggie, they got the same Aggie situation, huh, basically? You know, the thing about them is with 
you know, they no the fans don't like Brendan. The fans don't have any faith in Brendan. For some reason, none of the fans, the faithful over there, believe Brendan's the guy, right? So they're all going to somebody else. They're all saying it's the new guy, the young guy. They're all saying that JT Daniels being the athlete that he is can fit into that system with Brian Kelly, who does like to use a little bit of quarterback run, but he's still a pro style type system, right? We said the same thing about Kellen Mond when he was here. Yeah. He got us 10 wins one year. He did. No, uh, it was a nine or 10 wins. What were we nine? Nine and one? Nine, nine and one. Nine and one. Because we won the bowl game. The right? shortened season. Yeah. Nine and one, including the bowl game. In a shortened season. Right. Uh, I don't know, man. Six and a half. Yeah, I think they probably go over. They got to, you know, they FSU, they open up with them, and that'll tell you a lot about because FSU is exactly. not going to be good, right? So if they if they struggle with FSU, it'll probably give you a pretty good idea of where they sit. Uh, Mississippi State in week four, and then a stretch at Auburn, Tennessee, uh, at Auburn, Tennessee, Florida, Ole Miss, Bama, at Arkansas. That's a pretty rough stretch. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a tough, tough one to go through. Uh, and then obviously the finish with the Aggies. I think seven's possible. Seven's possible. And they may be playing the Aggies at the end of the year to get to seven. I don't see it. So I'm going to go under. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, having a new system, losing a lot of talent, bringing in transfers. I'm looking at their schedule. They're going to be right on the line. I mean, it's going to be – I can see them going 75. I can see – I actually, I'm going to take the over. They're going to lose to Bam. I think they'll lose to A&M. They'll probably lose to Ole Miss and Mississippi State. That's four losses right there. And then Arkansas. Is that five losses? That's five. That's five. That's five. And who do they play on the other side? <laughs> they play Tennessee. And Kentucky. And Kentucky. No, wait, wait. No, 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 no not game. Kentucky. They play Tennessee. And, uh, oh, Florida. Who's, who's there every year? Man? They should be Florida. I mean, they should be Florida. It's going to be right there at it, man. I mean, but if I had to make a bet today, like one of my little $5 bets, I'd put the over on. Yeah, everything about the program tells you it should be over. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is that oh, no matter what you say about Kelly, he's a better coach than Orgeron. Oh, yeah. Like, He'll get the most in his out sleep, of the yeah, right. So I don't know. It's hard to say under, but man, there's the SEC West is tough this year, right? So I don't know. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shot in the dark under. I'd probably, if I had to put real money on it, I'd probably go over. Auburn at six and a half. Uh, return all five on linemen, O line, but they're bad. We know their quarterback's likely going to be Calzada. Uh, look, they got a really good running back, by the way. Bigsby, Bigsby's a talented player. Uh, they don't have a ton of playmakers on the outside, so is that offense going to really be any good is the question to me. You know, because once again, Calzada's going to face a stacked box. He's going to face a stacked box, and he's going to have to find some weapons on the outside to try to create some space, right? And he's going to feel just like he did last year. He's going to feel exactly like he did last year. He's not... Calzano doesn't make good decisions under pressure. He gets happy feet a little bit. He holds the ball too long. I think Calzano wants to throw the ball deep. I don't think Auburn has the talent to go deep. I don't think they have depth. Here's Everybody's talking about their defense being so right. good. Here's the other thing. But you that lose. defense is going to be is supposedly really good. A lot of players and all this stuff. They're trying to replace Derek Mason, who was a stud defense coordinator over there. And they're doing with it some guy from that that – Promoted and used to be their the defense coordinator at at uh, Boise State. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's that guy done? What's that guy done? I'll tell you this: he hadn't done what Derek Mason's done. Mm-hmm. So I I think the offense that I think that the defense takes a step back. Also, I you know, and everybody's talking about Harson and the things he's done, whatever. I'm look, I'm out on him. Who are they open with? I am out on him. Uh, an early game, uh, too easy. There's two easy openers, and then week three is Penn State at home. 
That'll tell you everything you need to know. If they lose to Penn State, they suck. They play Penn okay. State. I mean, Penn State's not suck. Yeah. Okay, I'm exaggerating. Suck. Yeah, take it. Um. Look. Yeah, I would say under. I mean, I just think the coach is gonna get fired this year anyway. He's on the way out. They wanted him gone this year. They wanted him gone. Dude, he's 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 gone. It's a dead man walking right there. Dead man walking. Poor guy. Five wins. That's all they get. Yeah. All right. And here's a couple of other ones. And this is, I got I got one I got one here. This is my lock lock of the year, buddy. Yeah. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. And the Oklahoma well, wait, Sooners. What's that Alabama lock of the year? Oh, that was my SEC lock of the year. Okay. Lock of the year. Sooners better strap it on because I will put a ton of money on the Sooners to go overnight. And let me say this. I seriously don't know that there's a chance that they even lose 10 or win, like lose two. <clears throat> their, that schedule in the Big 12 is so easy. So there is their coach, I, Venable? You're that high on Venable? I'm that high on the talent. Yeah, and Venables. I think Venables is going to end up being a good coach. But the fact of the matter is that their their toughest game in outside of conference is Nebraska. Nebraska has, sucks. Their coach is getting fired this year. He's also going to get fired this year. Mm-hmm. And so we're already firing coach. We haven't started week one. Yep. Amen to that. That guy's gone. All right, real quick. Ohio State, 11 over under. Real quick. I mean, they play Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State. I think they lose one game at least, maybe another. They lost to Michigan last year. I mean, Ohio State's good. Notre concerned. Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame. They got – it's a tough schedule. I mean – No, I'm going to go over. I'm, I'm taking – at 11, maybe one more loss. Can I bet the 11? That'd be a good bet. <laughs> That'd be a good bet. Michigan – let's see, Oklahoma, you said over. I like that also. Oregon, eight and a half. Open with – who? With Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. And then the other tough teams on their schedule are UCLA, Utah. Utah's pretty good. I but I think that's easily still nine wins. I'm going over for Oregon. Gotcha. Uh Miami. <laughs> Miami. Do they play Clemson this year? They do. I think I'm going under on Miami, and I don't know why. They because you you're know, an Aggie fan. You they think they're gonna see, lose AM. I do think they're gonna lose AM. But they get, that's two, but that's still that still gets you to ten wins. It's all about the ACC, man. Those teams what do you think about North Carolina and Virginia Tech, for example? I think they're I think they're down. I think Carolina's down. They lost their quarterback. They got a freshman probably going to start. Uh, Virginia Tech, uh, I don't think they're that good either. Yeah. So now that you say that, but I haven't done a lot of research. I haven't, probably, probably, I haven't done a lot of research on those teams. I I, I just keep thinking a- ACC. The more I think about it, that ACC is not good this year. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to go over on Miami, um, even when they lose to a and Texas at eight and a half. Uh, let me tell you, under, under, and under. Um, it says here you have seven Ws. See who they're going to beat. Well, because because the Big Twelve is they lost not to Kansas good. last year. That's true. They can lose anybody. And they also just lost their 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 it's shame. Guy, their receiver. It's a shame that, Vanderbilt didn't have Texas on their schedule. They might win. That might give them their extra win. Good. Good. Yeah, it's a shame. But this Texas team is not going to get to eight and a half. Ooh. I just don't. Texas so. Tech, five and a half. I like that bet. I like the over. Over. I do too. Yes, sir. I like what they're Look, doing. that Houston game is going to be tough early in the season. That's going to be a good game. Yep. Uh, NC State, also not a not a scrub. So they're going to have to get some wins out of conference there. You don't have maybe. the over under for the Houston on here. No, I don't. Uh, no, I don't. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I think Texas is over, and I actually like what they're doing. So I'm going to go Tech over. USC at nine and a half, I think is. Uh, I think they might be the most overrated team in the nation right now. Yeah. I mean, you bring in a quarterback as great as he is, and wide receiver, you still got to play defense. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Look, they're going to use to. They're going to lose to Utah. Yeah. The probably lose. To, the problem is that that schedule is cake. Cake, cake, cake. Yeah, you play the Arizona schools. They're. Getting fired oh, those two schools might as well close down shop. Look, here's here's another great one for me, and this is, we Duke. can we can end it on this one. Duke, over, over under of three, over. way over. Yeah. Look, I think he's going to do well over there, considering it's Duke, 
And I think three wins is going to be not a problem. I actually think that they go over. North they play Temple, Northwestern, North Carolina AT, Kansas. Yeah. There you go. Four wins. Yeah. All right. So questions from the tailgate brought to you by David Coffin, PLLC, tax controversy and litigation lawyers. My friend, question number one, four teams most likely to make the playoffs. Who are they? Georgia, Ohio State, I think Clemson, and then you throw another SEC school in there. Now you already got Georgia, maybe Alabama. Bam. That's four. Uh, I think Oklahoma's still got a chance to go in there. But yeah, I think you probably named them the, the, the if if you were to go look at the odds makers right now, those would probably be the four. So what's who's your surprise team that could make it? Well, like you said, Oklahoma. Um, God, who were we just talking about? We were just high on. Um, if somebody upsets Georgia out of the East, I mean, you're talking Kentucky or uh, Tennessee, maybe. That's a yeah. that's a surprise. That's a that big. Surprise. Well, he's, he's, them's always a big surprise. Yeah. And but they're the most Arkansas. Under, they're the most Arkansas team. baby. I named them earlier the SEC yeah. champion, so they're gonna put them in the mix. But now the big bet is. Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State are the odds one favorite to win the national. Game. You can take the field, not even pick a team. Just take the field and win more money than taking one of those three teams. I'd take the field. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, in Oklahoma, like I said earlier, it you know, Wake Forest, man, might have been in the ACC championship conversation if they hadn't just lost a quarterback. Yep. All right, so question number two. Devon A. Chain will be the number one back on this team this coming year. Duh. All right. The question is, will he compete for the SEC rushing championship? And by compete, I mean, will he win it? No, he won't because Jimbo won't let him. That's the easy answer right there. Jimbo will not let him do that because Jimbo won't give him the ball enough. A. Chain is going to be a receiving threat this year also. Okay. So we watched him in practice. Very impressed with his receiving skills, he can go deep. You run a real route with that guy, I don't see a linebacker keeping up with him anywhere. So you I don't see too many cornerbacks or safeties keeping up with him. All right, so sounds great. I think y'all heard me the first time. But if he does, sense? if he's not going to win it, who is? When you listen to Tex Ag, the guy from Alabama. Yeah, I think they're wrong. I don't know, there's a lot of talent out there, man. There's guys. The kid from Arkansas has got, but they've been split carrots so long. Yeah. So, sure. Well, what's the guy? Evans at Ole Miss. Miss. Yeah. Evans at Ole Miss is a big time talent coming from TCU. And Georgia always has good running backs. They're gonna run the ball. Georgia runs the ball. Yeah. They might put through. But they split. Downs. They split carries too. Well, a and A and M's gonna split carries. They're not gonna give. Rodriguez has got a suspension probably over Kentucky start the season. There's too many options. I don't think. I, I think, think A Chain is the rushing champion in the SEC this year. But I think A Chain will be the first running back drafted next year out of the SEC. I think he's the SEC's rushing champion this year. The more and more I get into this, I like him. If AM wins 10 games this year, A Chain's the MVP of the league. Maybe Heisman. <laughs> That's 10 games. That is two losses. He's still a little Heisman. Uh, I'm not sure I'm ready to go there yet, but I think he does need the SEC in rushing. Trey Williams did it. Trey Williams did it. No, that was under that was Jimbo's first year. Oh god. And uh, and I think uh, A Chain's gonna do it this year. No, I think that LJ and those guys are on the field for too much competition out there. No, I don't see it. Being. I don't think it'll be the same 1700 yards as Trey. But I think he's gonna have a very strong. 17 year. wins the. He traded it with 17. No, nah, you have to get more now. No. Less. He's going to win. Less. Yeah. All right, Ags. Giggum. AP. Corey. Signing out. From the gate.